something very special. Um, a, a very special award recognizing Elvis's military service during the Cold War. About time to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and as part of that, uh, we're adding a very formal um, presentation to begin our ceremonies today. We're very happy to have uh, a color guard presentation from the 95th Division of the U.S. Army Reserves in Oklahoma. Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you again for being here on a cold but clear and beautiful morning. And you know, I, I'll bet I'm echoing almost just everybody's thoughts right now, right here. I, I've been sitting down here uh, thinking that um, how, how proud I am, how all of us, how proud we have been over the 25 years since we opened Graceland um, to welcome over 15 million visitors up these steps. Wow. Wow. And um, so many proud moments, and so many of you have been part of those. And I can't, um, I can't remember a time that I felt more pride than just over the last few minutes. Um, yes. Amen. Amen. Being part of this legacy and, and part of this amazing story, and how proud we all know Elvis would have been, how proud he was of his service. Yes. Um, and I just, anyway, I, I just, I think I'm sharing what everybody else is feeling too, especially this history and how proud we are of you all and how thankful. So, and I'm not going to uh, delay things anymore because I know it's cold and, and I want to uh, uh, introduce uh, the commander of the 95th Division of the uh, U.S. Army Reserves, Major General James Archer. Thank you, Jack, thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. It's widely known by just about everyone here uh, that Elvis served in the United States Army with honor and distinction for two years. From March 24th, 1958 to March 5th, 1960. He was called to the service of his nation and he willingly stepped forward to shoulder this responsibility at great personal sacrifice. He didn't use his celebrity status to avoid this obligation of citizenship and as much as an admiring public would allow, he avoided the spotlight, placed his career on hold, learned his military craft, and served honorably and faith faithfully in the defense of his country. At times overlooked today about the era of his service, 
is the fact that the United States was engaged in a cold but very real war that at times took us to the brink of nuclear exchange. It was a war that threatened at any time to turn tragically hot. Elvis Presley left the light that he knew and joined fellow Americans on what we commonly refer to as the frontier of freedom. He did so in the tradition of his forefathers, eschewing favor that most certainly could have been sought on his behalf. Sergeant First Class Houston Denham a soldier in the 95th Division Institutional Training, United States Army Reserve, is a huge fan of Sergeant Elvis Presley, the soldier. Elvis <laughs> Presley. It'll be on the board. Still looking for our voice. 
Then came the king to the world that's known. Drawing from the uniquely American sounds of gospel, blues, and country music, Elvis created a new music that was revolutionary and distinctly American. Just as no one could have predicted America's emergence as a world power, nobody could have predicted how successfully Elvis would achieve his ambition or the impact he would have on music and society as a whole. He matched the diversity of musical influences, creating a sound and style that had never been heard or seen. In the process, he became the first genuine rock and roll icon, providing a new generation with a unique sound to call its own. But despite his success, Elvis never forgot his roots or his values. In 1958, he was drafted into the Army. At five, Elvis put his career on hold for two years to fulfill his duty to his country. Many people believed this would be the end of the Elvis era. The rock and roll revolution had begun to subside and he was losing popularity. But Elvis was not ready to leave the stage. Yes. No. After his release from the army, Elvis displayed a new set of talents and went on to star in 33 successful films. <laughs> Even the British invasion, which began in 1963, not a military invasion, that other invasion, did <laughs> not diminish the star that was Elvis. In 1971, at the still young age of 36, Elvis had earned the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. Obviously, Elvis the man had talent, but as much as we remember the music and movies of Elvis, we also remember a young man who began his singing career in a small church and who still loved to sing simple gospel songs, even at the height of his fame. We remember a young man who was discovered because he wanted to give his beloved mother a gift. And this is why we still celebrate his life. It is the ideal American life story that humble beginnings and Four values <coughs> and still lead to greatness. If you were raised on a small farm in the country as I was and you spent your youth watching trucks go and come just as Elvis was born in a small town and watching the trucks and buses coming and going, some going southeast, some coming northwest, thank God. He got how humble your beginnings. If you grow up dirt poor, you can still, as Bill Clinton did, become president of a small town called Hope, Arkansas. And if you were born in a shack in Tupelo, Tupelo, Mississippi, you can still be the king. Yes. For you, Jack, we have a proclamation signed by Honorable W.W. Harrington and by yours truly, A.C. Wharton, declaring this to be Elvis Presley Day. Yes. Go for it, baby. <laughs>
it. Can we get that for you? <laughs> okay, I'm going to move back here. Right, look at that. You have to look to the view on? Yeah, you have to look at it. Okay. You can zoom in there, too. I, maybe I can get it. I'm going to open it. Maybe they'll. Yeah. Okay, I'll think move to Everybody, can you get any? Are you getting some? I know. Can you get some? See that? Oh, that's good. That's good. You have to take two. Thank you so much. Okay. I think I got it. If it disappears, you know who stole it. I'll get that sword. That's your goal. Is your take the first day cake? I can't. Maybe I'll get some. Jesus. You've done that. Because I guess it's mothering you off, but it's not tipped enough to see. Get <laughs> pieces of cake for people. We haven't got some pieces of cake. I don't know if they're going to cut it, don't they? There's only two crows. Thank you. 